Now what we need to talk about are functions. What defines them and what makes them different from other relations. So let's actually go back to where we began and see if we can get some common agreements about what we see is happening. For example, in our first relation, we take the names in the domain list and we pair them with names in the range. This example is not a function. There are lots of things that are wrong with it as far as functions go. For starters, not every domain value gets used. In a function, every domain value must be paired with an item in the range. If any domain value is not, then it's not a function. There's another problem with it in that Mary is paired with two boys, Mark and Matt. In a function, you're not allowed to pair one item in the domain with two items in the range. In a true function, for every one input, there is exactly one output. Not two, not three, one. So, let's go to our other next example we talked about. The idea of awarding points based on placement. Now, this is an example of something that is a function. As I go down the list, one, two, three, four, each of those is paired with something. So that's good, that implies function. Second, every one of these items in my domain only has one output in my range. That also shows that we're talking about a function. When I look at my graph, even though it's four dots, the dotted line is not part of my function, I can see that for every single number along the X line, there's only one Y value. Now that's very important to note. So to be a function, we're talking about a relation where every domain value is paired to exactly one range value. Not two, not five, not three, but exactly one. I also want to make sure that every item in the domain does get used. Now, let me draw a graph on here. We'll talk about some other examples of things that may be functions or not. So there's my, my graph paper, if you will. There's my, my axis. Let's, let's put some potential graphs on here. Let's talk about this graph here. And then it continues off the page. Does that look like a function? Now, when I look at the way it curves, I can see as it goes up, it continues off the page, and I can see that many times there are two values that get used. But notice, those are Y values. My X's down here along my horizontal, my input values, I can see that for every one of those, there is exactly one Y. So that shows me that I'm meeting both of these ideas. Now, it continues to curve outward, so that means every domain value is used, and every domain value only goes to one range value, not two or more. Now let's contrast that. Let me draw one in red that would not be a function. Maybe it looks kind of like this. So there it is. So when I look at that, right here, I can see multiple intersections. That implies I'm not looking at a function. So the red is not a function where the blue is. This is what we call the vertical line test. This is what we refer to the idea of drawing a vertical line through the graph and seeing if it crosses the graph more than once. If I have multiple intersections of that vertical line, then I say it's not a function. If I can go the entire graph and never cross twice, only cross once, then I do say it's a function and I can apply the function term to it. Let's take uh, some number sets and let's do a, a T table and see if maybe that also shows some functions versus non-functions. So there's my T table, put some numbers on it. Here's my X and my Y. And so maybe I go uh, negative two, three, five, four. And then over here I do zero, zero, one, zero. 
Actually, I want to make a small change. There. There's my t-table. Now the question is, does this collection of data represent a function? Well, let's see. Every item in my domain is paired with exactly one item in the range. And it looks as though uh, there are no overlaps. So I could say that, yes, this is a function because negative 2 goes to 0, but no other numbers. Now, if I were to add on to here that negative 2 went to 3, now I violated the function rule because negative 2 goes to two different values. It goes to 0 and to 3. If I were to draw this as a map, so here are my x values and here are my y values. And so in my x values, I've got negative 2, 3, 4, and 5. And in my y values, I have 1 and 0. So now when I go to draw my arrows, negative 2 maps to 0. OK, let's change pens up here. That's what I wanted to use. Negative 2 goes to 0. 3 goes to 1. 4 goes to 0. 5 goes to 1. So this relation appears to follow the rule of being a function. Every item in the x value gets used and goes to exactly one value in the range. As a question now, can you guess what the rule is that I'm using as this particular function? Call that a bonus question that will kick things off tomorrow. Lastly, I can graph it as well to verify that it fits what we're talking about. Before I leave this completely, I want to remind you about how we write things in set notation. So let's write down the domain and the range using set notation for this particular illustration. My domain are the values negative 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I make a curly bracket, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, and a curly bracket. My range is made up of the values 0 and 1. So I make a curly bracket, 0, comma 1, curly bracket. Remember, when I ask for the domain and range, I'm asking for a list of values that represent that collection or that set. All right, so we've got domain, range, we've got relation, we've got function. All right, coming here tomorrow, we're going to start asking some questions and see where we get.